Volvo on a beautiful tour pretty much of Colorado. We're starting from sunrise to sunset, so it should be really beautiful. Come along with us today. Hello, I'm Tymon and I'm the photographer for Out of Spec. And today we're gonna go through Colorado to showcase my photography and the Volvo V90. So we just got to one of the spots, which is a boat inlet, correct, I think? Um, and it's got a good diagonal view for the sunrise. And it is slightly at an angle, but that's okay. You'll be able to see the sun a little bit more. And then after this spot, we'll go to where the uh, sun will face the car head on and not in the back, and then we'll go from there. Just have it stationed like this until the sun rises, otherwise if we stay here too long, it'll, the pictures will just get blown out. And then we'll switch to a spot over that way where the sun will face the car in its front quarter, and then those mountains will be lit up. And then, yeah. First I had the car facing the other way so that I could get that sunrise in the background with the front of the car, but I didn't like it that much because uh, there's not really any clouds in the sky, so the sun's just blown out. Um, so I turned it around once I saw the orange in the mountainside, and it worked out very well. And I think next what we're going to do is bring it up to a parking lot up there to get a higher view of the orange on the mountain backdrop, and take some pictures up there, and then go from there. So at the last location where the boat ramp was, there were some stuff that I didn't like in the picture, like the barrier for that you couldn't drive any farther and then some of the signs. And I'll take that out during in Photoshop for post-production, which will take me about 30 minutes per photo to make it look like it's real. And then for here, what, I'll, what I'm doing is I'm putting the camera just into 1 250th and then, um, an aperture of four with an ISO of 400. It's always better to shoot below the correct exposure in raw so that you can still get stuff out because if it's overblown, it's hard to regain smoothness of let's say like the car or something like the background. Having it underexposed, uh, I can still regain when I bring up the exposure, some of the key details, but that's a lot to do with the lens that I use as well. It's a Sigma 35 millimeter art lens which is one of the better or if not the best lenses to use but I shoot in after 4.0 or higher for the most part if I'm doing the entire car so that the entire car is still in focus and then post-production sometimes I'll blur out, blur out some of the mountains in the background so that it brings attention to the car otherwise if it's something super close up I'll shoot at a 1.4 or somewhere around there so it Blurs everything around the center focus besides, let's say, like the Volvo logo. Okay, so my eye, my uh, aperture is a 1.4 where um, it will blur everything around this where I have it focused right here on the Volvo logo. It will blur everything out around it. So I'm going to bring it as close as possible to where I'm trying to show you guys as well. 
so that oh it's not there we go so if, just click and then here you can see that just the Volvo logo is in focus and everything else is just a little blurred out. So we got some good sunrise photos, some of the background, maybe a little less of the sun, but we're gonna go get some Starbucks and then uh, we're gonna go deeper in the mountains. Estes Park in Colorado. We're on I-25 South and to get there I'm going to be using Pilot Assist which is adaptive cruise control and active lane centering and I've been set at 80 miles an hour you can change the di following distance. Pretty self-explanatory how to use it. Just press a couple buttons and I'm in uh, shredded up the hill here with some dude in an F-250 who is absolutely shredding and um, just filling it up with fuel because when you drive these Volvos hard, that turbocharger and supercharger, it just chugs fuel. Um, as you can see, I spilled my drink all over me in the back seat uh, because we went into a corner quite aggressively. Uh, but man, for a cross country, super comfortable daily driver, this thing just hauls when you really put your foot down and uh yeah quite dynamic even from the back seat and very comfortable back there six foot one tons of room for me and uh yeah i think the only downside when you drive these cars hard is just man it just sucks the fuel down <laughs> we are pulling into the stanley hotel where they filmed the shining really cool spot And this is where The Shining was filmed, that very spooky, creepy horror film. But other than that, it's a very beautiful, absolutely gorgeous hotel, actually. And I think we're going to go try and grab some breakfast because it is 8.30 in the morning. So we've been up pretty early and I think I'm getting pretty hungry and ready to go have some lunch. Or no, breakfast. So let's go and see what they got. spot right here look at that view <laughs> we'll get the car lined up kind of how timon wants it and then we can get some shots with that as the background that is just 
so nice. We made it into Rocky Mountain National Park and there's some amazing views. We're gonna explore this place a little bit. take some uh, panning shots of the Volvo th with the mountain in the background. So basically uh, you'll, you'll be stationary and you want me to drive the Volvo by fast, slow, what are you thinking? Uh, medium speed, like 35, 40 miles an hour. Okay, so enough. And um, there was a good spot probably back over there with that little field with right. this view. Take a look at that view, it's just unbelievable. Out the window. <laughs> Tough to capture, uh, but uh, yeah, let's see if uh, Timon's photo. So, so what's your plan for setting this up? You obviously you have uh, some sort of ND filter on there or uh, a polarizer. It's a, it's a polarizer just to get the reflection off, off of the car. But I'll do a um, low shutter speed, probably between one fiftieth and one one hundredth, and then just do uh, f stop and ISO just to make it so that the colors are correct and it's not overexposed. And uh, what that's going to do is what exactly? It's going to allow the shutter to stay open for a long period of time. Yeah, so it can ca it can capture the motion in the picture. So basically, you're going to try and match the speed of the car with your camera. Correct. Got it. Cool. Well, I will try and drive consistently then. I'll go drop you off over here in beautiful Rocky Mountain National Park. See if we can get some nice drive-by shots of this thing. Whenever you're filming cars or shooting them for photography, you get used to doing a ton of U-turns. And thankfully, the cross country has like an amazingly good turning radius. This is where you're thinking, right, Timon? Correct. All right, so I'll drop off here and uh, you hop out and I'll do a couple drive-bys. Auto leveling on it. <laughs> Pretty neat. Alyssa, what are we doing? We're going on a quick hike, I believe, and uh, going to see a glacier. Oh, that'll be pretty neat. Timon has the correct shoes. Correct? What do you mean the exact same thing as your shoes? <laughs> yeah, not, <laughs> just lots of ice, so we'll be slipping and sliding. We're at about 9,200 feet of elevation here. Pretty sweet. Here's where we're heading, 256 feet. I think I can manage. Beautiful. <laughs> Timon, it said there might be thin ice. I guess you're testing it out. Bye-bye. <laughs> heading out of Rocky Mountain National Park and into uh, town, maybe try a local brewery or something. Volvo, perfect car for that uh, exploration, wouldn't you say, Timon? Yeah, I love this thing. Yeah, it is so comfortable to just cruise around in. 
Just had some nachos as a quick snack, waiting for that harsh midday light to go away. Timon, can you explain real quick while you're here some of the reasons you choose to shoot at uh, morning and evening? You know, I've heard of golden hour, but what exactly is going on when the sun is not directly overhead? Uh, it reduces reflections a lot, so the car looks a lot cleaner. It's easy to work with, and it is easier to color match the car with the, through post-production than it is if it was in direct sunlight. Let's say you have a blue, dark blue car, and you're shooting in direct sunlight, it will come off as a lighter blue. And then trying to match that color and get the skies correctly blue as well, it's a lot harder process than it is to do it if you're to do it early sunrise or at dusk to where it just looks blue and you have less harsh light to work with. Okay, I sort of kind of understand. Anyway, the Volvo <laughs> looks good no matter the light, I think. Just doing a little exploring and found this awesome view just behind us here. I've put the parking lights on for you, Timon. And dang, does that not just look super awesome? And there's also a really good peak over there in the distance. So how are you framing this up? You wanted the car straight on for this particular shot. What was the reason? Just because the big boulder is right in the middle. The road's pretty narrow, so it's easy to frame that way just to have both sides symmetrical. And um, I mean, it's just, we're, we're looking towards that way. So let's just have the cars facing that way. I might turn it around as well, but it's just an easy framing. And then I'm using the, my polarizer to get rid of some of the reflections on the rear or whatever angle I'm shooting from the side that looks, that you see the most, I'll get the most reflections out of it so that it looks the cleanest. And then, the sun's not that bad. It works really well with this color, so that's what I... Um... It's coming out now for sure. The clouds are just parting ways here. Um, but man, is that not one of the coolest backdrops right there? I tell you a little bit about the car we've been driving for this video. You know, I wanted to come up to the Rocky Mountains because uh, Timon, who's actually filming right now, is a great automotive photographer and I thought this is a perfect car to go on a little adventure and try and get some great shots with a beautiful background. So let me take you around. This is the 2021 V90 Cross Country. Uh, it's updated for 2021 with some styling as well. We have a new grille. These new uh, individual uh, pinstriping things are pretty neat. Um, it's, it's all very minor upgrades visually to the car. Mechanically, almost nothing is different from previous model years. Come around the back with me. Uh, this is another point where they have changed the car. These new taillights are a new unit and they actually fade on when you turn the car on. They're really nice units and this color itself is great. But really the V90 Cross Country has been tastefully updated. The Bowers and Wilkins sound system has different speaker cones now. It sounds just as good, if not better than the previous gen. I really don't think there's any measurable differences here between 2020 and 2021. However, that does not mean this is a bad car. This is a fantastic car. You guys know we love modern Volvos on this channel, and this particular one is like the ultimate road trip experience because it's the normal V90 with a bit of a lift kit. This one's fitted with air suspension, although it doesn't actively raise or lower, it does self-level. And there is an off-road mode as well, and we've been cruising up and down some dirt roads here. And uh, yeah, it's just a really nice car. Let me show you in the trunk boot space. Really quick power tailgate, tons of room for all of our stuff. Of course, the rear seats can fold down if needed. And of course you have power open and close. Around the front, let's pop the hood. And I'll tell you what's power in this Volvo. And it is a four cylinder turbocharged and supercharged engine, two liter displacement. 
Uh, the way you can find the latch is always following the Volvo badge to the top, and then you know the hood latch is gonna be right here. So, sorry about that phone call midway through. Here is the T6 engine, 316 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. It's got a little balancer for harmonics, I guess, for a little balancer right there. Um, good engine, uh, you know, really good low-end torque, really good high-end power, kind of lacks in the mid-range, but we're at 10,000 feet of altitude. I'm getting out of breath. <laughs> but look, it just looks great in this environment, doesn't it? What this car is really good at is just cruising and wafting down the road. Not meant to be a race car, certainly handles better than it deserves to, as with all modern Volvos. And uh, yeah, great sound system. Everything about it is awesome. Let's go continue exploring. And we're taking shots all the way till the sunset. driving around uh, Rocky Mountain National Park, Northern Rocky Mountains in general, uh, going past the new EV chargers they just put in in Estes Park, and it's snowing. <laughs> so the whole plan of chasing sunrise to sunset may not happen time. And what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's four o'clock and we can barely even see the sun. So I think if we get lucky, I don't think we'll have it here, but we'll have something hopefully in Fort Collins. Right, so I think we'll head back to Horse Tooth where we started this whole event adventure and uh, see if we can uh, catch a sunset there. If not, then we just had a great day exploring and our story went out the window, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, we are back on the same bridge from where we started early this morning. Sunset is quickly approaching, but it doesn't look like we're going to have any views here. Basically nothing at all. Nothing at all. But uh, talk about what you're doing now that we have a unique opportunity to talk about shooting in the snow, perhaps. And maybe you can say some things that you were planning on doing for the sunset shoot of the Volvo. So first I'm going to talk about framing. So here we basically have it centered somewhat. I just had to move it. But... Um, what I'll do is I'll shoot first all the way down facing with, uh, west. It follows the trail with the guardrails, and it's easy to center with the lines here, which makes it very visually ap appealing. And then I would move, I will move it to be uh, like diagonal across the line and stuff, just using the line as a center base. So basically that your eye follows this line to the center of the car, that way you look at it. And lighting-wise, this type of lighting, it's kind of dark and hitting my eyes <laughs> um, but it's good for this color of car but let's say for a black car I would also like to shoot it in this type of weather overcast and something you can drop the colors with a lot but let's say a white car it would work a little bit but at, for the most part it just depending on car lighting type you would want so for let's say a black car you'd want overcast because it's easier to work with and then um, also do not shoot in JPEG. That is <laughs> garbage. So I sh shot... Well, with, what are you shooting with? Tell Because we so haven't I talked about this. I shoot with an EOS R. It's a full-frame mirrorless camera with a, um, a Sigma 35 art lens. 
which is probably the best lens you can buy for the money. And if you shoot raw, you you lose color and quality. So if you start messing with your contrast, your exposure and stuff, it increases grain while when you're shooting with... You mean with JPEG? Yes, with JPEG. You increase your grain when you're touching all your adjustments and doing post-production stuff. With uh, raw files, you get a lot more data within the photo and it gives you a lot more adjust adjustment ability in the post-processing part of editing a picture. You're like freezing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it doesn't allow, it keeps the grain a lot lower and you get a lot more information, so which allows you to shoot at a lower aperture to keep the stuff dark so you can always go up because you don't want to go above, let's say, for like exposure. Like overexposure. Yeah, you don't want to go past uh, one exposure when you're in post-production because it, it starts to increase grain and starts to look pretty bad. And the same goes with down. You don't want to go past like one, one and a half. Cool. Well, what did you think of the Volvo today? You had a cool subject to take pictures of. Yeah, it was pretty cool. My dad has one. I love them. They drive great, super comfortable. But this is my first time actually doing like a full photo shoot with one. Pretty impressed. And especially with the ski box on top, it makes it look a lot better. Totally agree. Alyssa, we've done hundreds of miles of exploring in the Volvo cross country today. And uh, what did you think about it? It's a lovely car. Lovely car. I've got to unlock to let Timon in. And uh, I think that's the end of the video. What do you think, Timon? Yeah, I think... Uh... No sunset for us. <laughs> the idea was to chase sun up to sundown and do basically highlight Timon's photography with the V90 with the best backdrop ever, Colorado. Um, but sunset's not going to happen. But we got most of the day and I hope some amazing shots. Really fun time. Thanks so much for watching. And of course, you know what I always say. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Bye.